I'm here in Memphis, Tennessee, on Main Street, just south of Beale, and I'm here to... Wait a second. South of Beale? You ever have a triple D deja vu? That'd be like a quadruple D, not a triple D? Because I bet you I have been here before, but it's... It was called South of Beale. That's the South of Beale. Look, am I getting punked? Is somebody coming out here right now? I'm here to check out a noodle joint that's hand-making their noodles, doing the bomb ramen and dumplings. It's right here. This is Good Fortune Company. But I'm telling you... One minute on chicken for chicken rice bowl. I haven't seen anything like Good Fortune. You know, it's been good to my stomach. Cocoa curry for bar 11. The fresh ingredients, the handmade noodles. Mm. Memphis meets Southeast Asia. If you know the city, we do mixes together really well. Yes, you do. That, that is a very Memphis style and attitude. And the stamps that Sarah Stye and Arturo Layton were anxious to take on. Arturo and I are inspired by Japanese ramen, but our flavors come from all around Asia. And then you kind of take your own liberties from that. Yeah. Big city bowl for you? I had the big city. It's a chicken and chicken broth sort of noodle dish. I mean, I could just drink that broth. The noodles, of course, are obviously different than any other ramen shop. This will make the noodles for the ramen? Exactly. It'll fit in the Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> so this is high gluten flour. And then over here, we have our alkalized solution, potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate. And it's just going to change the... Molecular structure of the noodle? Exactly. <laughs> we put salt in there, and then we pretty much just whisk it. So then we start it, and there's teeny holes right here. It's going to mix for 10 minutes. And then from there... Sheeting and feeding. This actually looks like we're making biscuit dough. The compression of this machine, you get sucked into that thing, you're dead. <laughs> That's why I keep my hair back. Me too. <laughs> we feed slowly, and it starts to come out the end. I see it. Then we feed it onto our roller here. Wow, that's like leather. Put one here. Right. Another one there, join them together, and keep feeding about two more times. Then it's cutting it. And then you catch. It cuts it for you, dusts it for you. Rest them overnight, and then we cook them. I assume we're into broth. These are chicken backs, water, and it boils hard for about 15 minutes. Got it. We'll skim it super well. We'll lower the temp. It'll stay at 160 degrees for about five hours. That's it. That's it. So we are cooking chicken thigh. Everything is pretty simple until we reach the flavor town step. That's now a reference in culinary terms when you reach the flavor town step. Sugar, salt, and let the chicken thighs rest there overnight. Par bake at a really low temperature, cool it for service, and then when we're ready, we'll deep fry it. We're just gonna put a crisp on it. What are we making now, chef? Shoyu tare. Shoyu is how you say uh, soy sauce in Japanese. Then we go in with sake and mirin, dried shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms, got it. Niboshi, dried anchovies. Okay. And this is kombu, it's a type of dried kelp. After it's been infused for a month, we heat it. And what's gonna happen? From here. We're going to add everything to the pot, cook for 10 to 15 minutes, then we're taking our kombu out. Bonita Flake is going in with the brown sugar and salt. Simmer that for about 20 minutes, and then strain everything off. We got a lot going on. The duck fat. Infuse the ginger. This is our marinated menma uh, bamboo shoots. That's what I thought. How did we do that? Slice the menma and marinate it overnight with sesame, soy, sake, and mirin. Now that our noodles have been rested overnight, we're going to cook them for two minutes and build our bowl. Start with one ounce of shoyu tare. I'd eat that all day. The duck fat, kondashi, and salt. Then Got we're going to go in with our chicken broth. Noodles are ready. Awesome. We go in with chicken, our boiled corn, the menma in there, thinly sliced scallions, nice hard boiled egg. I like how you put the egg right towards me, saving the egg for you. Gosh, this is good. The real ones. Slurp. I did it right, then. Yeah, you did pretty good. All right, I'm not yeah. bad. <laughs> the chicken is crispy on the outside, tender on the inside, almost like it was sous vide. The broth is delicious. I've never had the fresh made bamboo. Mm. That's amazing. Lights out. Noodles going in broth for the big city. When you bite into those noodles, just biting almost into a cloud. It warms your heart, it warms your spirit up. That's a highlight reel right there. <laughs> you need a spotter here? Someone with a drop cloth or something? Got a chicken rice bowl. I know I've been in this kitchen before. After I have some dumplings, then we'll really get to the root of the issue. Spicy pork with kimchi. Memphis is a city with a big food presence, but it's mostly dominated by good southern cooking, lots of barbecue. So it's always really interesting to see something outside of the norm. 
There's always a line down the street. They come rolling in right behind the great success of South Beale, which is right next door now. Yep, mystery solved. I was in this exact location back in 2012, shooting a different Triple D joint. This was South of Beale. It said it right here. Yes, that's and right. now it says it right there. That's right. You bought the building, moved. They rebranded right. the entire place. Yeah, so we actually complement each other really, really well. Crawfish for bar five. Uh, crawfish dumplings are the best. And just breaking that thing open and then dipping it in that great sauce, uh, it's wonderful. What do you got for me? We're going to start with some cream cheese. So maybe we're making a shrimp rangoon or something. It is actually inspired by the rangoon. Ha ha! Whip up our cream cheese just till it's a little bit more malleable. Fish sauce, lime juice, lime, lime zest. Lime zest. Thai basil, salt, and we're going to mix this up. All right, we've got this. We're going to add in our crawfish. Mix it just till everything is folded in together. So this is the dumpling wrappers that we've made. Tapioca starch in between the layers. Keeps them from sticking. Then we have our circle cutter here. Shape our dumpling. So we put a little water just to help seal it on the side. Fold in half. We do a little oh. pleat on the end. And what gets served with this? Sweet chili sauce on the side. Of course you make that. Yes. Of course she does. Water, rice wine vinegar, lime juice. Brown sugar. White sugar, Korean Pretty chili, chili. flakes. Little salt. Soy sauce. Sambal, bring that up to a boil, whisk it well, finish it with a cornstarch slurry. You said it's a togarashi seasoning that we're going to make? Yes. Red citron peppercorn, black sesame seed, white sesame, mustard seed, and toast that off and let it cool. Put it in the grinder. Then we're going to combine with garlic powder, orange peel, ground nori, gochugaru, and then it'll be ready. Got it. We've got our crawfish dumplings that we've fried up. Toss it in our togarashi spice blend. And there we go. There you go. Oh, I like the little lime zest in there. The togarashi seasoning on the outside is awesome. You can really taste the crawfish in there. And everything right down to the sweet chili sauce has dynamite. Well done. Sweet chili sauce. It's got a kick to it. And that's what I like about it. It's got a lot of cream cheese as well. Just a good bite. Dropping wings. I want everybody to check this place out. It's always good to be here. I love the creativity, and you're doing great food, and I can't wait to see where you guys go with this. I'll be back.